let's do some sample solving pro problem solving together. Um, suppose that we have a situation in which an applied force is acting on an object where we know what the texture or the coefficients are between the two surfaces. You might be asked a question like this. How would we determine whether this box would move or not? Well, of course we would start with our free body diagram. Now we're not really sure what kind of friction is going to act on this box because we don't know if it moves or not. Really what we could do to answer this question is determine whether or not this thing has enough friction to keep it at rest. So let's consider the limiting case where the frictional force is the maximum force of static friction. Now we can go ahead and solve for the force of gravity, but don't fall into the trap of thinking we know what the normal force is. It's not always the opposite force of gravity. In this case, there's an upward pull on the box that together with the normal force cancel out the force of gravity. So let's go ahead to Newton's second law to figure out what the normal force is. Since this box is constrained to move along the horizontal ground or in the x direction, we can conclude that the acceleration is zero in the y direction. In other words, all the vertical forces must cancel out. So let's list them out. This allows us to solve for what the normal force is, only 88 newtons. Now why do I care what the normal force is? Well, the normal force will allow me to determine how big static friction can be. So it looks like the largest static friction can be is 26.4 newtons. Now that static friction force is acting in the x direction. So it's really a question of whether the static friction force is enough to overcome any other forces in the x direction that might make this move. Now at a glance, we can see that the only other force that exists in the x direction is a component of the 20 newton force. And since it's a piece of a triangle that the hypotenuse is 20 newtons, it must be less than the maximum force of static friction. And so we know our box is not going to move. Let's look at another situation in which we have an object that goes into a slide. So the driver is moving along, he slams on his brakes, and he begins to skid. As he skids forward, he slows down until he finally comes to rest. Knowing the friction coefficient between the tires and the road, we should be able to predict how far this car will slide before it comes to rest. Let's start with a free body diagram of the vehicle. Even though the car is traveling forward, there's no force propelling it in that direction. It's going into a slide, and so friction is resisting the slipping of its tires against the road. You can solve for the force of gravity in this case. And since this car is not accelerating or even moving in the y or vertical direction, we can conclude that the normal force must also have the same magnitude. This will now allow us to determine the size of the kinetic friction force. Now we can go to the x direction to find the acceleration of the car. In the x direction, the only force is the force of friction. So we can conclude that the car will slow down at a rate of 3.92 meters per second squared. Now the question of how far it will slide now becomes a kinematics question that can be solved with an equation that doesn't depend on knowing time. Now we're assuming we're putting our car beginning it at the x equals zero location. And we're going to describe the positive and negative directions as follows. We can then solve for the displacement of the car, its final position. And it looks like this car is going to skid a little more than a football field before it finally comes to rest. As an interesting aside, we may notice that the actual mass of the car doesn't matter. Since the net force is coming from friction, and the normal force is dependent upon the weight of the car, notice that the mass cancels out, and that the acceleration of a skidding object is simply the coefficient of friction times the acceleration of gravity. The amount of mass of the car presses it harder against the road, giving you more friction, but it also gives it more inertia, making it harder to stop. And so these two factors cancel out in this case.